Hi, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today we're doing a demonstration of a solid state musical Tesla coil designed by Joe DePrima and the Texas chapter of the Geek Group. Joe, why don't you tell us how this thing works and what it does? Well, basically it's your average run of the mill solid state Tesla coil. The secondary in a Tesla coil has a resonant frequency which is determined by its inductive and capacitive properties. And this particular Tesla coil in operation runs at 135 kilohertz. So the coil works at 135 kilohertz, right. but humans can only hear between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. Exactly. Healthy humans at that. Right. How is it that you can hear the output that comes out of this? Well, basically what we're doing is we use digital circuitry to turn on and off the coil within the audio range of hearing. So okay. if we want, say, a 400 hertz uh, tone to come out of the Tesla coil, then we turn it on and we turn it off 400 times a second. Okay, so you're modulating the output of the coil into the audio range. Right, exactly. Okay. And so it's like we have a resonant frequency and it's like we're cutting it up into pieces. We're letting it resonate at its resonant frequency and stopping it. As the coil is resonating, we have a current transformer that attaches to the base wire of the secondary coil. And from there, we turn it into a square wave, which ends up being the drive signal for the coil. Since we're using all digital circuitry for our drivers, for our FETs, we have an enable pin that we're using to actually uh, modulate the coils with audio. So at any point, we can shut off the coil digitally using a light signal. So Joe, show us in here what does what and how it works and all that. Best place to start is going to be with our current transformer, which is right over here. Okay. Okay, and what's going to happen now is um, off that current transformer, while the coil is running, it's, we're going to be picking up a sine wave. Now at that point, it goes to this board right here, which okay. is a phase lock loop, okay? That's the PLL that we've had trouble with through the prototype. Yeah, the okay. PLL is gonna go. Well, you see on the current transformer, we have three turns on the primary, okay. and on the secondary, we have about 80 or so, mm -hmm. so we get a peak-to-peak -peak voltage that's much bigger than the original voltage. Yeah, it's a primary. step up transformer. Right, and then what we're using is we're using signal diodes to clip the peaks of that sine wave and we turn it into a square wave. So now we have a sine wave that was once going positively and negatively with respect to its reference point, and now we're just getting a pulse, which is a square wave, which is happening at the resonant frequency of the coil. Okay. Now that's going into our PLL chip, which is a phase comparator, right? And uh, the PLL consists of the voltage controlled oscillator and the phase comparator. Basically, we're biasing one side of the comparator to make the pulses come in slightly before they actually do. Every time we send our drive signal to another digital stage in the circuitry, we get what's called propagation delay. So say that like on one of our chips, we turn it on. It takes however many nanoseconds to turn on on the output. So we're using the PLL to compensate for that. So what are these, what, what is this board here? They, like these, the FET driver chips, what are those? Okay, the FET driver chips are taking the digital signal from the PLL and it's turning it into a, instead of having zero and five volts, which is our input signal, which is our feedback signal, it's turning it into a zero to 12 volt high current signal that okay. we're using to drive the FETs through these gate drive transformers right here, which isolate it from the low voltage board. Now where are the gate drive transformers? The gate drive transformers are conveniently tucked away on both sides oh, of our filter capacitor. Oh, they're down capacity. in there. Okay. Yeah, you see that? Okay, yeah. That, this is one and that's the other? Right. So okay. a full bridge is two half bridges. So technically we're, we're just using two GDTs uh, to drive both sides of the full bridge. On the FET driver chip, we have an enable pin. And what happens is depending on the voltage we send to the enable pin, it'll keep the chip from working or not. So if we send a low signal, which a low signal in electronics world means zero volts, to pin three on that chip, the whole coil stops working. But we can make it turn on and turn off really fast by doing that. And that's where this comes in right here. This is what we call a disruptor. And what it actually is, it's a zero crossing detector. In an audio signal, you have a voltage that, in respect to a reference, swings positively and negatively. Let me see if I got this right. right. If you were to look at this on an oscilloscope with the audio signal, you'd have if zero was here, right. the audio signal goes up and down right. above zero. Right. And that's the zero crossing is right when it changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. Right. Okay. That's exactly what it is. Once the voltage gets over the reference point, our circuitry here takes that and turns it into a digital signal. Once it's over the zero point, we have on or we have off 
or okay. zero or one. It's okay. just a digital signal at this point. Okay. We have these light pulses that goes over this fiber optic cable to the fiber optic receiver, which takes the light and it turns it back into a digital signal. Okay, so let me see if I got this straight. What you've got is an audio signal generator, right. which in this case is a very high-tech keyboard. Yeah, very high-tech. From 1977. Top of the line. Oh, yeah. And this outputs an audio signal through this. Correct. Okay, so this is just a standard quarter-inch TS instrument cable. Exactly. Which goes into this box, mm -hmm. and every time this, free, this input signal crosses zero, right. it sends an impulse through the system out, out the light, and you get a flash of light every zero crossing. Right. So if this is a low frequency, and it's only crossing zero, like let's say it's A, and it's about 400 times a second, right. this flashes 400 times a second. Right. Okay. And that's, and it can be anything. It doesn't have to be a keyboard. We, you, as, as we'll show in a minute, you can talk through it. You can play a yeah, bass through it. Yeah, you can do anything through it. And this is totally isolated electrically. Everything here is one side, and everything here is the other side. And there's the big wall of plastic and glass protecting one from the other. So right. That there's no electronic connection between here and there. If this has a failure of some kind or there's a problem, the operator of the keyboard can't get electrocuted. And this works to the enable pin here which triggers the MOSFETs and the drive circuitry and all that. Exactly. Okay. There's actually two different, two totally different things happening here. So the coil is already resonating at 135 kilohertz. Right. But this coil can be turned on and off very, very quickly. Exactly. And if we have a 440 hertz input signal here, mm -hmm. and this is modulated at 440, mm -hmm. this is turning this on and off 440 times a second. So it appears that this is resonating at a different frequency. Even though this is at 145 kilohertz, it's, it, it sounds different. Right. If this was much bigger and modulating at only 50 kilohertz, you wouldn't hear the really, really high-pitched whine. You'd just hear whatever you were putting in. Exactly. Okay. So give me the history on this. Who helped build it? Uh, this coil was created by myself and Oliver Greaves in Austin, Texas, with the help of Steve Ward, who lives in Illinois. He walked us through a lot of this because this is actually uh, the second solid state coil that Oliver and I have ever created. Our first one was a half bridge, wasn't quite as big, not quite as impressive. And that's why we decided to build this basically. We wanted to get longer spark length, louder sound. And we created it uh, with the help of Fairchild Semiconductor, donated the uh, power MOSFETs, and Texas Instruments donated the driver chips. Optech Incorporated donated the fiber transmitter and receiver. And the rest of it was bought by Oliver and myself. Okay, just scrounge a couple of parts here and there. Right. You got some pretty creative applications of processor cooling in here. That would be from Goodwill Computers, but we actually bought them. Now, what's the caps here on the back, the two big capacitors? Oh, these capacitors right here are meant to keep DC bias uh, from the FETs while they're in operation. Okay. Um, and I see we've got this, we've got a Variac set up and, and the keyboard, so you want to... Make some music with it? Sure. Okay. Uh, you want to play it or you want me to? You should play it. I should play it. You okay, play you work it. the Variac. All right. I'll go on the low voltage side of things. First, we're going to start by hooking a keyboard to it. Um, this is the standard test we use here in the lab for while we're setting it up. So I'll just pull off a couple riffs. It'll also do a polyphonic sound, so you can put chords into it. Alright, let's try uh, hooking up the bass.
That pretty much concludes our demonstration of the modulated solid state Tesla coil built by Joe and the Austin and Oklahoma chapters. So thanks for bringing it on in today. We really appreciate your help with this. No problem. Cool. And you guys will see this um, in the 2007 year. A larger, much more finished version will be on display here at the Geek Group Bowdoin Research Institute. Thank you. antenna and this also adds a large element of safety because there's no electrical connection from here to here. This is just glass and plastic. It's it's a an optical fiber, so it's, it's inherently safe. <laughs> and if you unplug it, it becomes uninherently safe. Yeah, I should have stopped. You should have told me it did that. <laughs> you, you knew it was gonna do that and you're here like here. Go yeah. ahead, duck, unplug the thing. Yeah. <laughs>